think we can actually start. Uh, we'll start by saying a very good evening to you guys and thank you very much for joining uh, today's Tick Mills uh, course module. It is module number four uh, of this course. So we are actually going through a couple of things that makes out the whole trade plan as well. Uh, so elements of it, and it's more like an F-Expresso type course, which gives you a little bit of a, a taste of what the whole trade plan is about. And we will be talking about the price trade plan going through the step by step, uh, basically putting all the things together that have actually, uh, you know, that have begun, um, you know, sharing with you from module one onwards. So there you go. We are going to go through them practically and we'll be going through each one step by step uh, of the trade plan itself, which is called the price trade plan. Okay, so welcome to today's um, fourth module. Today is the 13th of March. 2018, uh, the fourth module, like I've mentioned. So uh, today's the last uh, module of the uh, that first course that you have. So you'll be entitled to uh, join the quiz questions. And once you finish your quiz questions uh, and you pass with a minimum of 80 percent, you'll be sent out the um, the certificate as well by Tickmail. Okay, so that's basically it. It'll be a, a, a very fun, uh, practical uh, course tonight as well. So we'll be going through them, yeah? Any questions, you can leave it to the last or feel free to actually ask uh, at, at the time of the course as well. Okay, guys, so let's begin. Uh, before anything else, as usual, I'll just be reading out this uh, very brief disclaimer right here, okay? If you guys don't mind, it'll only take less than a minute. Trading financial products such as CFDs on margin carries a high degree of risk and is not suitable for all investors. Losses can exceed the initial investment. Please ensure you fully understand the risk and take appropriate care to manage your risk. That's it. Okay. So as you guys know, we'll be, uh, you guys will be sent, the attendees of the course will be sent out this presentation slides as well. You guys can actually contact your account manager, uh, kindly email to chris at ticknail.com uh, to actually um, request for both the recordings as well as the presentation slides. So we've gone through module one, uh, which was titled Trend and Price Action. We've covered a couple of things there, including moving averages, price actions as well. Module two went into psychological numbers right up to the probable reversal zones as well as support resistance zones. Uh, we've actually gone on to lot sizing as well in module two. two. And uh, in the model, in this model here, let me just go down to model three, we covered the uh, geometric patterns analysis. Uh, geometric patterns basics and uh, drew out some of the patterns, very unique geometric patterns right there to actually predict the market. And today's um, course will actually go through uh, step one right up to step five, just an outline of it briefly to go through the price trade plan. So what do we actually do in step one? What are the P's involved in step one, like the psychology of the market? What do you need to do to checklist um, the market to understand um, you know, the market better before you make that financial or trading decision? That is really, really important to go through uh, basically the techniques and methods that uh, we do here, both um, collaboration between Ethics Geometry and Tickmill. So here, for example, in step one, we'll be looking into uh, how do you actually pick the pairs, but before you pick the pairs, the right pair for the day is really crucial. How do you do that? I'll be going through with you on very simple steps to actually do that. And um, that is going to decide whether or not you are actually in a fast moving um, pair or a pair that is focused by the big boys. And there's really no point for us to actually trade the pairs that are actually low in liquidity, low in volatility, not really of focused by the big boys, because we will then end up just being in a very slow market while the rest of the market will be actually moving really fast. Okay, so then we've got potential trade ideas, of course, the geometric patterns as well. We've also got patterns, uh, you know, price patterns as well as the geometric patterns itself. And uh, we've got personality of pairs, okay? Uh, this is what uh, auto charties can actually help you that's available via Tickmill as well to actually know what are the trade ideas as well as the personality types of the pair, what, what kind of um, currencies or currency pairs that actually move best in what time of the day and in what day of the week, you see? So you can actually use uh, auto charties for that that's available to you uh, via Tickmill. 
Okay, and uh, we want to also move on uh, to potential reversal zones as well to understand your risk element. And these are all things that you can actually, um, you know, make sure or assure yourself of a trading decision just at the step one of the P of the trade plan. And then we move on to the risk reward. You want to make sure that you've got the right um, amount of equity risk um, that you are willing to take as well, you see. So a couple of other things, including the lot sizing that we have actually covered in module two, okay? And then we actually go on to uh, insider's info that can actually be, um, you know, shared with you uh, by your mentor like myself. So we we actually run a research department on the markets and we, go into geopolitical risk, geopolitical factors as well, that can actually match up with the patterns as well as the sentiments of the market. This will then give us an edge in understanding what pairs best to trade, how far the trend will actually last, as well as what patterns to actually confirm that sort of factors from both geopolitical uh, as well as uh, the technical side of things, okay? So then uh, once we've done all that, then we go to the C. The C is, uh, stands for confirmation or convergence. Confirmation meaning from step one, one right up to about step three, whether all of them actually match up to give you a clearer picture of not only the trend, but also the trade ideas themselves, you know, the risk level and everything else. So we want to confirm and converge everything that we have uh, or seen from step one right up to step uh, three, okay? Then your final stage is your step five. So we want to go through all this practically onto the Tickmill uh, platform, MT4 platform tonight. And this will be a very interesting night for you guys. So you guys can actually then look at how me as a trader or a mentor actually analyze the markets before I make some trading decisions. And I use the, the price trade plan to do so, just to keep you guys you know, well aware of a step-by-step -step process that makes you really busy up in your mind, in your brain, then you would be less busy in your hearts. That's the best, that, that's the best I can describe of the ultimate mission and objective of making you a strategic tr trader, okay? Or mentoring you to, be, to become a strategic trader. Okay, guys, so that's basically it. Um, we also wanna look at, you know, how we, uh, need to actually always connect fundamental analysis. You know how uh, most traders are actually looking into um, NFP or let's say CPI or PPI. You know they're quite familiar. Traders are quite familiar that they are economic calendar to look at economic data. But it's more important for us to understand that they are economic data correlations. That actually means that you know one may relate to the other, or one may happen two days before. That may actually give you an idea of of um, you know how uh, probable would it be for the next one to be positive or negative. You know, like the N, like the NFP non-farm payroll. We want to look at on a Wednesday for the ADP as well. Why so on and so forth. How do we correlate them? You know, these are these are all important indicators for us. In within the indicators itself is to correlate them. Okay, hope it makes sense, but we'll go on to the chart slowly and we go on to the steps practically as well. So it'll be fine for you guys. All right, guys, so let's actually move on to a couple of things I would like to share with you. We'll start off with the um, first P, meaning uh, the first P itself, you know, stands for the pairs itself and also the, the, the pairs that relates to the psychology of the market. You know, psychology of the market actually means that how do you actually know what's happening in the market straight away? This is a site called actionforex.com. We'll combine with the tools that are available on Tickmill's website, like auto charters, as well as the economic calendar as well. But here itself, it gives you a bit of a pattern itself on what are the pairs that are focused by the big boys who are paying more attention to them. So what you do is you can always go on and have a read on actionforex.com. It's you know non-biased brokers. It's just got some information. I wouldn't say that it's the best and it's a hundred percent. You know, tools are tools. At the end of the day, they are also you know probability in within the tool. So what we are actually looking at here is just a a bit of a bird's eye view and how do you do that is by going on to action forex you go on to markets and you choose top movers that actually gives you an idea of the top 10 pairs that are actually moving the most but also focused by majority of the traders and investors at the time okay just to give you a bit of an idea so you go on top 10 movers it's not the best 100 percent type tool but it gives you an idea because at the end of the day um 
these tools are going going to only make you know a very small percentage of the entire process anyway because you're going to have so many other steps that would confirm and reconfirm the entire process so uh, it's important for you as a trader to actually pay attention to the process and what you do rightly to actually combine and keep combining all these ingredients together in order for you to understand how to actually trade practically. So let's say, for example, uh, on the top 10 right here, as you guys can see, uh, I would like you guys to focus or pay more attention to the first the first column here and the column that is titled under the change percentage column. So you just want to look at the, just the two uh, columns you know look at the pairs right here from one to ten and look at the change that means appreciation or depreciation what that actually means is if you've got plus sign that means the base currency is on the buy so most people are buying that currency on the left uh, which is your base currency and then setting the second one so for example you've got gbp cad on the on the second uh, row and uh, you are looking at plus 1.23 right there okay so that actually means that you've got a buy position mostly by traders on the GBP and then they're actually selling the CAD okay now I want you to actually look at the first column right there and uh, maybe you guys can actually look at a pattern that actually means that um, could you see the currencies from one uh, right down to let's say number four which currencies are mentioned the most do you guys can uh, could you guys actually look at that and maybe type it out and tell me which currency is is mentioned most from number one to number four and then in number six it's mentioned once again and then the last uh, on the 10th uh, list is actually mentioned once more so which currency would that actually be brilliant Nazreen that is brilliant so thank you for that Jess, Jesse as well that's brilliant so you see uh, that is just a very simple step so you can actually see that there is a pattern there is a concentration and a focus on to the CAD but then could you also tell me what would the CAD what would most of the investors uh, do would they actually be buying uh, as you can see from one to ten right there if you've got CAD involved would they be preferring buying or selling the CAD what's your opinion with it yeah, Kumbulani, that's great. Sell the CAD, that's brilliant. Because why sell the CAD? Because what, I'm not saying that because they're selling the CAD and you go straight onto your chart and sell the CAD. No, it doesn't work like that. But we want to know the market sentiments because you may be looking at what they have done maybe hours and hours before, before they go to sleep. Because in New Zealand and in Australia, for example, most of them are already asleep. They're waiting for the next day to come up. Yeah. So we are just ending our day, but they're going to be starting the next day. So uh, there's a lot of things that we just want to know so that we can gather these information. So you've got that rightly said there, okay, with um, selling the uh, CAD. So you've got buying NZD here, selling, and then GBP here, buying, and then selling CAD, buying Euro here because of the plus sign right here. Every plus sign or minus, it's only talking about the base currency, which, which are the currencies to the left, yeah, for those who are very new to this so when you look at that you can actually then say yes you know majority of concentration for that time uh, or so would actually be buying uh, sorry selling the CAD and buying the rest uh, buying the opposite sort of currency okay let me just check on the one there all right Adolfina when you talk about CAD you're actually not buying let's say the first one here right because the NZD is in the front and that's the base currency. So when you look at the plus sign, that means it's buying. That's correct. But they are buying the NZD, not the CAD. So they are buying always the plus sign or the minus sign here is talking about the currency to the left, the first currency on the left. Okay. So if you see a minus sign, like let's say number four, minus right here, they're actually selling the CAD because CAD is the first one. If they are selling the CAD, they are buying automatically the CHF or the second currency to the right. Okay, so there you go. Uh, if you want to, you know, have it updated, you click onto your F5 on this table. Okay, refresh, and uh, you'll get the latest one. As you can see, last updated, it gives you the timing right there as well. Okay, uh, it's not 100 percent as I've mentioned, but it would be quite interesting to know that. Okay, CAD is the one that is paid a lot of attention on the CAD, so in majority they were actually selling the CAD. Correct. So very easy. Now, once you've actually got that one currency that's mentioned a lot on the top 10 table, it usually happens that 
more than 80% of the time, you'll see one currency that's mentioned the most. Sometimes the whole one to 10 currencies are actually the same pattern, uh, either buying or selling on that one pat one currency, but most of uh, this one currency is mentioned in all 10. And that's a, actually a very good sign. That means there's just so much focus on that, but you need to double confirm that by yourself onto the chart, okay? with your own eyes okay so that's basically it. so now when, once you've gone onto the market right like that and you've done your top uh, 10 your top movers all you need to do now is go into currencies okay no sorry go into the vol volatility chart now volatility is when things are moving crazily let's just put it as simple terms right so when you've got volatility you've also got opportunities but you, with the opportunities comes a risk as well so hence the reason it's really important for you to measure the market properly with me with tools that i use practically to measure the market cut your risk and increase your probability okay so here for example when you've actually got that uh, that simple currency, that one currency that you've picked out of the top 10, you've got your CAD. So you go into your CAD right here, and then you go into four hour daily chart. You just click on that one. I just want to look at the volatility of CAD on a four hour and a daily chart, just because they've got more data on a daily chart and a four hour chart. But what you want to do is you want to see that, that whole purple area or that area right there, which one, which currency would the CAD be pointing at to tell you that it's very volatile. Now you could see CAD and you can see that that sharp angle or N right there is pointing, it's closer to C, to JPY and it's really clear. Sometimes you will see two, three currencies. Most of the time you'll see just that one that is paid a lot of attention to. So that actually means that you're looking at a CAD volatility chart and it's telling you that the CAD against the JPY it's really, really volatile. That's it. So what do you do next is you try to use CAD JPY as your main pair that you'll be looking at for trend and everything else because when you look at CAD JPY, all pairs can actually be correlated with major pairs, exotic pairs, and many other pairs. I'll give you an example. If you look at Euro JPY, Euro JPY can be correlated to many other pairs as well. Okay, so I'll I'll give you more on the next tutorials on how you find correlation correctly. But I want to actually point out to one particular pair and that particular pair can actually give you an idea of how you can look for patterns. And because it's volatile, it'll be moving quite a lot, but then we need to look into the trend after that. Okay, just to confirm the trend and everything else. So um, we're looking to the top 10 movers. It says that CAD has been selling more, yeah? But it's not a guarantee that they'll be selling now. They may have sold, it may be time to buy. We don't know, but we were gonna be confirming that right away. So you could write that down now, CAD, JPY. So what we wanna do is we want to concentrate on this CAD, JPY as an example tonight for us to actually look into the entire price trade plan with it, okay? So just an example, we go on to CAD, JPY as an indicator, okay? now. Let's say we go on to CAD JPY right here. Okay, now look at what's going on. We start off with the, let's say I would like to start off with a five minutes chart. That actually means I want to do a trend analysis first. Remember what we do when we want to do a trend analysis? We apply the tool. What tool would it be? The exponential moving average. Okay, so it's a moving average that you actually do and click on insert, go on to indicators, go on to trend, and you click on your moving averages, correct? Now you'll be applying three lines, and this is just a revision for you guys who've actually missed out, let's say, and you will apply the 50, we've got your 50 right here, and then your 100, and then your 200, okay? So you've got three exponential, so it wouldn't be the simple one, it would be the exponential moving average. You want to apply to close on all the three types. So you've got, again, I would repeat 50, 100 and 200 and once you've applied them you've got your three lines like this let me change the color right here because it may be not that visible on the last line right there uh, let me change that to purple color right there so that's your 200 exponential moving average you call it ema and then you've got your 100 ema right there and then you've got your 50. now very simple what do you do in a trend analysis you need to make sure number one your candles position 
the further under the candles position you see the current candles right here all these candles they have to be either under all three lines the further away and further under they are under the three lines that means it's bearish okay that means bearish on the five minute chart yeah and if you look at candles above like this above and further away and further above the three lines the candles we're talking about yeah the group of candles yeah this one the group of candles right now now the price and the current candles are under so that's actually giving us a bearish sign if they are above all three lines there's a bullish sign okay but this is just one time frame now never if you can not to ever look at trend based on a single candle or just one time frame but that's going to just increase your risk tremendously okay be sure to do that okay to always look at at least a set of three time frames or many many time frames doesn't matter i like doing it looking into five minutes right up to one, four hour right up to daily or even weekly and monthly doesn't matter this is just your very first step of identifying the trend you need to look through a couple of trends a couple of time frames sorry and you want to look at the position of candles whether under all three lines or above all three lines and then you pick a cluster of three time frames to then focus on one to draw that final analysis or patterns or support resistance or anything else, okay? But when you do trend analysis, you can actually go over as many time frames as you want. But we start off with small. I know there are different strategies out there and they go on to big time frames and then small time frames, but you know, I see that you can actually create a story if you look into small time frame because uh, small time frame meaning the current position right now, okay? So now to the future. Okay, so this is what we want to look at. So if we go on to five minutes, you can see that downtrend right there, mainly because you've got candles under all three lines. And you want to also look at how the three lines are moving. The three lines needs to be having split ends, like the hair, split ends. That actually means they shouldn't be touching each other, which they should follow the position of the trend, the, the, the direction of the trend. That means pointing downwards, okay, and split amongst themselves okay not to touch um not not to be touching or entangled with one another that actually means if they are entangled then or, or moving sideways that means that it's not very clear the trend itself is not very clear even on that time frame so then we go on to five on to 15 minutes chart let's look at what's going on you can see that candles further away which is a good sign under all three lines but the position of the three lines the direction the way it's moving it's got a bit of entanglement going on that actually means that the trend is not very clear for the upcoming time frames okay so now if we go into the 30 minutes chart let's go into 30 minutes chart you can see that it's moving sort of sideways the three lines but then candles still persist in moving under all three lines so yes you've got a bit of a bias to the downside but how far would it go to the downside much more in days and weeks or things like that? It's not really clear. Why? Because the three lines are not showing you that. The three lines should also be pointing downwards nicely, three lines pointing downwards, really clear. The further downwards and the more steep the angle of the downwards of the three lines, the better would it be. Stronger would the trend be as well. So now we go into the one hour chart. Now the one hour chart, you still have the candles and it, you know, wouldn't be that many candles now, but then they're still under all three lines, but then three lines are pointing sideways. Now, what do you do when you see sideways? Sideways with the three lines are actually indicating uh, to you that it's not only uncertain, but it's um, having a lot of holding position. Traders are waiting for something. Maybe they are waiting for data. Uh, release there are many things that they are waiting if they are in doubt to actually buy or sell you as a trader need to stay out that as simple as that so you need to monitor go into another pair or things like that go into the major pairs let's say um, look into economic calendar look into uh, the type of pairs now for me personally i don't actually go onto the economic calendar to actually look at the results I've never been doing that for the past many years. What we do is just to look into the economic calendar, look into the high impact, medium impact news for the day and which, um, which currency will it impact, that's it. And that's basically what we want to know because that would create momentum or volatility in the market, create a bit of a stir in the market. That's what we want. When there's a stir, there's opportunities as well. Okay, but we just need to write it um, carefully and we just need to know the tools to apply so that it lowers your risk, increase your probability.
Okay, guys. So then if as we go into the four hour chart right there, let's see what's going on in the trend again. Now the trend is more biased to the downside at this moment of time for the four hour chart. Great, mainly because you've got a bit of more clarity on the four hour chart and you can see that the three lines are split, you know, but you've got candles, you know, went in between, but then it's coming right out of that three lines and just peeping out. That actually means that there may be a bit of a start of more selling going on for the CAD JP okay on the four hour chart which is a good sign so it does actually marry and match with that top 10 that we've actually seen majority of traders investors are looking into selling the CAD there may be a lot of reasons with the CAD maybe we need to go on to the fundamental side of it especially economic data releases look at whether or not there are recent releases for the CAD's data that are negative or maybe they're waiting for more, but they're expecting, the traders and investors are expecting more negativity with that. So maybe that's why, because this is the four hour chart. So you've got a bit of a bias still matching with the top 10 on selling the CAD. So when you are combining CAD with any other pairs, make sure you be very careful with the trend because investors, traders are still focusing on selling the CAD. When we go on a four hour chart, various other charts earlier on as well, time frames especially, we're looking at more selling of the CAD as well versus the yen especially. Okay, because CAD JPY highest in volatility as of today at this moment of time. So uh, when we look at that, we try to confirm the daily chart as well. And then we go here and we see, yes, there are just much more. As you can see, candles are under and further under three lines three lines a bit of entanglement right there but they're pointing generally to the downside now if they start to split later on that actually means you know it's just got more and more power to the downside for the cad okay all right there you go guys so here you've got your cad jpy right there uh, we're looking at only the trend side of it okay i want to look into all the elements and then we want to actually make the decision of whether you want to pick one hour chart four hour chart daily chart or you pick three now okay because you've you've seen the you've confirmed sort of the trend but now you want to pick three out of that many many time frames uh, how do you pick three now the three time frames that you would choose, you would choose one out of three now. I uh, will choose three out of the many, many that you look at, okay? But out of that three, you're gonna choose one to actually start to draw the patterns, but the patterns need to be drawn on a very clear type chart. That means the pattern's clear, the trend's clear, and things like that. Now, uh, when you wanna pick the three time frames to start drawing um, you know, the, your patterns or support resistance or anything like that, you need to pick one out of three, right? So that one out of three or that three time frames does depend on your equity. You need to be very careful with that. What that actually means is that smaller your equity, smaller time frames. Okay, bigger your equity, bigger your time frames. I'll give you an example. If you've got your $100 or, you know, we five hundred dollars and below type uh you know uh, equity level to start off with you want to start off small and you want to test it out and things like that uh, it's no harm at all it's actually the best uh, thing to do as well uh, it all depends on your risk appetite as well as your capability for that capital to start forex with now if you've got that amount under your 500 it's probably best for you you know i'm not talking about a trend analysis trend analysis you can look at many time frames but i'm talking about your um your, your drawing your final three time frame type okay so you can look into one hour and below for that okay so you can start off with the 15 minutes here 30 minutes and your one hour so this would actually give you an um you know sort of a smaller type pattern aiming at 20 30 pips let's say or even less uh, but then it gives you a, a feel of trading little little pips you know because you don't want uh, too big a pip too big a uh, you know pip target as well uh, can only be in higher type time frames and higher type time frames that would then uh, be fitting in more higher equity level okay if you've got your ten thousand us dollars life market life trading account type then you're looking into one hour four hour daily it's still possible to draw that in those time frames if anything less than you want to look into lesser time frames as well for your drawing for your analysis actual technical analysis onto your charts okay now hope that makes sense here yeah? so we are looking at let's say just an example okay one hour four hour daily okay and you want to draw your chart 
uh, before you do anything else, now you've moved from trend, right? You've actually moved out from trend. You've understand a little bit about the trend, confirm a little bit about the trend based on the EMAs. What do you do next? What you do next is price action. Price action is really important. Uh, once you know that, okay, you would like to participate in the market as a seller. When you're a seller, you need to watch out for buyers. If you are a buyer, you need to watch out for sellers. Okay, how do you do that? You need to look to the left. All right, that's very important because this would then reduce your risk tremendously and help you decide whether or not you've got a risk coming out that may actually kick you out of the market or make you hit your stop losses or everything, anything that would actually prevent you from going to the direction of your TP. You know why? Because let's say if you're looking at a one hour chart and you've gone onto the top 10 and you've seen that the CAD, lots of people are selling it and you would wish to also sell in the market. Correct. So you would be a seller. Now, if you are going to be a seller right here, okay, I'll give you an example. If you're going to be a seller, I'll go onto my four hour chart so it becomes a bit clearer for you. Let's just now you are a seller, right? Let's just do that here. Now you're a seller, you see loads of movement down. And the thing that traders do most of the time that is really, really risky is based on zooming out, zooming in, sorry, zooming in a lot like this and looking at single candles like this. And when you look at single candles like this, you cannot make a trend decision, a trend analysis. So most traders, what they do is that, oh, it's downtrend now. No, it's not downtrend. We just, oh, maybe it is, or maybe it's not. We don't know until we compare the gen generally most of the time frames. But then we cannot make our decision based on single candle movement like this and say it's downtrend, so I'll, I'll go on and sell it. OK, now the thing is, the reason why I say that is because you need to be aware of whether the buyers will actually challenge you, whether the buyers will be taking you out, whether or not what that means is that whether or not you will you will you might um, be uh, what you call that um, facing a reversal, whether this coming down, what what if it just bumps bounce up? upwards now that could happen right now how could that actually happen that could actually happen if you look to the left okay if you look to the left you could see that in the past you could see very clearly in the past from where the current price is if you look to the left this was exactly the point that prices has jumped up all the way up here of course, it took some time, maybe years, maybe months and years and weeks and all that. But if you look at that, from that point right there, right up, it's an appreciation of 900 plus pips. That is a very significant uh, push of the market to the upside. And that is based on that point here. And that point here is really close to the price point of now and the price of CADJPY at this moment of time is trading at 82.42. Okay. And it was at 82.42 sometime back in 2017 last year, in June last year. Okay. So in June last year, you had that appreciation of price exactly at where price is at now. So it's really, really dangerous for us to participate in a market and start selling your CAD now, mainly because you might be taken out by all these powerful buyers. What that actually means is that you are selling, you are a seller, but you are entering the zone, the area of the buyers, which are very, which is very dangerous. This is the area of the buyer, okay? So what you would need to do is you need to zoom in a little bit, concentrate on all these candles right here. You've got a bit of a, uh, you know, you've got that push up to the upside, but then again, you look to the left, you've also got previous resistance a little bit right there, has become a big support right here, okay? So there's all these um, uh, buyers have actually dominated the whole market at a time and then push prices up 900 plus pips up. So what do you do then? You concentrate on this family of candles here where the price is appreciated and you draw two lines that makes out a support zone very very important okay so you need to draw a zone here so you draw it from the lower body of the candle and the lowest wick of the candle and you got the two lines once that actually happens then you can see that the current price now is sandwiched in between 
two lines that makes out a very significant support zone. So what does that actually mean? That actually means that it's not wise or it's very risky for us now to make any trading decision or enter the trade at this moment. It's like putting your finger into a spinning washing machine. That's really dangerous, okay? Because anything can, can happen at any time. Meaning, might just come there and trick you and thinking that, okay, you've got more selling. Oh, look, there is a bearish candle just came out. But how would you know that wouldn't actually just bounce up any time and just follow the previous sort of, sort of buying zone and get price pushed up all the way, okay? So as it pushed up as well, if it does actually push up, it would find resistance at any one of these lines as well. So it's a really very risky time, correct? Also, if you look to the left, earlier you look to the left for the buyer's zone and then you draw that support resistance, correct? And then you want to also look to the right. When you look to the right, look at current price itself, it is now trading at 82.44. Now, 82.44 itself, we look at 0.44. Yeah, the last two, the, the two digits right after the decimal place. You can omit the very last uh, digit. Okay, so let's look at it as 82.44. Now, if prices were to actually go upwards, it will bump into the 50 psychological number. That actually means you've got a psychological price to the upside at 82.50. I'm just going to draw that line at 82.50, okay? I'm going to draw the line at 82.50, which is a psychological price or level, okay? So we've got that 82.50 right there. Now, if prices were to come down and down and just depreciate further from 82 uh, 44 right down to 40 and then 30 and all that the closest psychological level down that means under the current price is 8220 so i'm going to draw another price right there okay so 82 8220 is another psychological level of price now i've got all these lines now now these becomes my zone. This is the zone that I should not do anything. I should wait until price or candles come out above the zone to give me a bullish mom, a bullish type biasness or to come under all these lines to give me more bearish bias. Now you get the point, yeah? You get, you get to know how the price action works, yeah? So if we go on to just highlighting this whole area right here, Okay, as the main PRZ potential reversal zone. Why? Because if you are selling, it might reverse on you and then go upwards. Okay, so you need you need prices to actually first go either above that zone or under. So what do we do when price is at or in within that blue zone? You just don't do anything. Okay, it's very risky. Okay, we want to wait until we've got more confidence in what the market is thinking of doing. When they are all going into the market for a sell and they have come under that zone, then you've got more confirmation that the more bigger sellers are participating in the market and you ride along their, their decision and, their, and the market is created by the big boys, okay? If not, it will be very, very risky for you, okay? So that's basically it. So you've got your... Um, you know, ways to understand support resistance as well. So these are all uh, ingredients that will actually cut your risk and increase your probability. Looking right, looking on the left. Okay, so very, very important. Then you look into the trend first. You do your trend analysis first, and then you do your price action analysis, looking to the right and then looking to the left. Very, very simple rules. But these simple rules are the one that is going to cut your risk a lot, a lot, a lot more. Okay? Okay, guys. I hope you guys uh, understand that. If you guys have got any questions, feel free, okay? And you can actually do the same analysis uh, for any instruments, okay? The same type of indicators that I'm using. This is solely the only indicators that I actually use for trend. Don't use any other indicators apart from just the price, uh, just the, um, uh, what do you call that, uh, geometric patterns, which are price patterns, okay? All right. For now, maybe take a little breather. You guys are okay so far before we start drawing a little bit of patterns, maybe. Um, any questions at all? Anything that may actually be 
uh, you know, a little blur or would actually deserve some clarification, perhaps? Any questions at all, guys? Any questions at all? You guys are okay? All good, guys? Right, we're just going through all these uh, revisions, basically, so that you get a better idea, and then we'll straight go on to trade ideas. Hi there, Jess. That's a very good question. Um, yes, a lot of practice. Uh, what you could do is, you know, you could go on to uh, joining the uh, Telegram group as well, so that we can all share in the community. It's uh, fxgeometry.com. Uh, and uh, you need a lot of practice, but you can always ask questions at any moment of time. You can always send your questions to chris at tickmill.com as well. Uh, it will be forwarded to me, and I'll be happy to answer your questions too. Uh, with the candlestick patterns, uh, with um, let me just see. I don't really look into candlestick patterns at all uh, because I, I don't find it really necessary at this moment of time. So what we actually do here, um, the name of the group is... Uh, what you could do is you go onto the um, FX Geometry, fxgeometry.com, and you will see the Telegram group on your right, and simply click that, and you'll be able to join the group straight away. Okay? Yeah. Kindly go onto the FX Geometry. I'll just type onto that. The FX Geometry uh, website and uh, our teams actually working in collaboration with Tickmill as your educators and mentors. So it would be easier for us to monitor your progress and, and you know, keep guiding you guys on how to trade um, using the geometric trading method especially. Okay. I've sent it out. I think I've sent to you guys uh, the website. So it is www.fxgeometry.com. Okay, and yeah, brilliant. And on the right, you'll see the Telegram group and kindly just click onto it, uh, join it, and uh, you'll be in the group, okay? All right, so I think it's time for us to actually straight away look into trade ideas, okay? We will uh, repeat this session. I know this is this is meant to be a trade ideas uh, type session. I've, uh, I've made a bit of an introduction to you on the course uh, to, you know, uh, tell you what it would be like for the course on Thursday. So th Thursday will expand the course a little bit more, uh, but now we're going to go into trade ideas uh, just because we've got loads of uh, demand and requests to actually go through some of the things that was covered in the course so that you guys can then understand how you can analyze the market for yourself before we, we uh, revise and go through everything on Thursday again. So on Thursday, we'll just expand that course uh, thing for you again and go a little bit more in advance. Uh, but tonight, I just want to repeat all that before we go into trade ideas for you guys, okay? All right, hope that's okay. All right, so um, now we've got that covered already on that um, support resistance side of things, okay? So now what we will actually do is then to look into a couple of majors as well and look into some trade ideas that we can uh, actually do before I open the floor to questions for you guys, okay? So here, uh, let's just look into one of the most popular major, which is Euro uh, USD. okay? So let's just uh, get rid of all these object lists right there. Because um, I, I just thought I, I would start off with you guys with, you know, certain basics so that you guys can start doing it because it's beginning of the week as well. It's best to cover some support resistance and a couple of other things that are really, really very important to you guys. So here, we'll start off with the one hour chart, let's say. Let's say I've, I've picked my uh, three favorite um, time frame, which are the one hour, four hour day. Let's say it's for, for myself because it matches with my equity and this is uh, the risk that I'm willing to take and everything. So I would compare one hour, uh, four hour and my daily chart, let's say. Okay, so now we start off Euro USD on the one hour chart straight away. You want to also time manage yourself. You want to do things uh, not just too fast, but fast enough to actually be complete and proper in your analysis. Okay, so now, for example, straight away at a glance, it's more biased to the upside, mainly due to the candles being up and above all three lines, correct? But the problem with that is 
Uh, we have got entanglement of the lines, of the three lines. And you see, it's not looking really good. It's just sideways. So what does that uh, show you? It shows you a bit of a mismatch with the trend and how far the trend can actually go. So here, the strength of the trend is not looking like it's very good because of the three EMA lines pointing sideways, okay? But you've got candles above. That's hence the reason you've got some corrections coming down, things are not really very clear as well, and you've got smaller candles and then bigger candles, and then now you've got depreciation of price, the candles and all that, okay? So it's really clear. When you go into the one hour, it's just not very clear in terms of trend, okay? Now, as we go into the four hour chart, just try zooming out a little bit and looking at the way it actually moves. Uh, we can see more, you know, more, uh, I would say, bias still to the upside with the way the candles are moving, mainly because it went up from there, it made a correction, but it found the correction or support being pushed by either one of the moving average. If it does that a lot, that's a good sign when, when you've got a corrective move or bouncing off or support or resistance from e either one of the EMA lines is a good sign showing you that there's a, a good support, you know. Now at this moment, it's good support upwards. So uh, still it's on the upside, but again, I'm not really uh, a fan of looking at um, uh, what do you call lack of clarity of the trend, okay? So the trend is not really clear, it's not really strong at the moment, mainly because you've got three lines pointing sideways. Again, there's a mismatch between the strength of the trend and uh, the, the trend itself, okay? At the moment with the candles moving upwards, okay? So now we go on to the daily chart. Now with the daily chart, it's a little bit, a bit of a different picture. So you can actually look at your one hour as your short term, let's say, four hours, your medium term, and your daily is your long term, let's say, okay? So um, when you look at that, you could see that it found some support right there and then it's, it's heading upwards. The candles are not really far and above all three lines, but it's beginning to actually pick up momentum to the upside. Uh, and the bias is to the upside, mainly because you've got a little bit better the way that the three lines are moving to the upside, uh, a better angle as well. So that's actually, I uh, wouldn't say a very steep type angle, but it's not too bad. As you, If you zoom out, you could see that it's reasonably steep as well. So you've got, um, so this summarizes um, for the traders saying it to us that, you know, you've got more room to the upside on the long term. In the long term, there may be more appreciation. There may actually be more reasons to feed euro to the upside, okay? So what we do is the one hour didn't really match with the four hour and the daily, mainly because we would prefer for a clear trend to actually match by seeing the same picture you see in the daily chart on the one hour and on the four hour. If you see all that matches, then you are likely in a right position to actually buy the market and you're looking for a bullish trend. But at this moment of time, not yet to the pattern, mainly because it's not really clear on three time frames. So what you can then do is go into a lower time frames and see whether or not you could find a better match in lower time frames. So if I start off with my 15 minute chart, I can see it's quite clear and quite nice that the trend, uh, mainly because you've got candles really far and above all three lines and three lines is pointing upwards very nicely on the 15 minute chart. As we go into the 30 minute chart, you can see a bit of entanglement happening. So I could say that, you know, from the 15 minutes, a bit of clarity of trend, but then the strength sort of gone down a little bit uh, on the upside. So as I go into the one hour, again, you've got the entanglement. You go into the four hour, it's not really, you know, timing wise, basically to summarize, it's not really nice and good on the trend side. So if it's not very nice and good or matching with many time frames on the upside or bullishness, then um, it's not really good for us to look for bullish trends. So you want to look at bullish patterns, bullish geometric patterns only in bullish market and bearish ones in bearish market, okay? So here I would say, you know, um, you could actually look into patterns when it's really clear. If you still want to draw a pattern, you can still draw a pattern, but the risk would actually need to be measured by yourself and you would be willing to take that risk or not. So for example, I'll give you an, uh, an example. We've got a nice C point here, mainly because if I look at A here, B here, C here, D to the upside, but the problem is the strength of the trend is not that strong, mainly because of the three moving averages uh, pointing sideways and I don't really have strong three time frames pointing upwards and giving me bullishness. But for the sake of um, practice, I would like to draw 
a pattern for you so you can actually look into it. Okay, so as you look at this movement here, it's an AB type movement, correct? And I like my C to actually land at either one of the EMA lines to make it like a cushion. Okay, so you've got a C point right here. Now, I'll draw my C point right here. This is for Euro USD on the four hour chart, okay? So now we've got my B to C right there, correct? So how far, if at all we've got more bullishness, how far can the D go? Very easy, double click onto the previous AB line. You can project that to the sky upwards, okay? And you've got a C to D projection, okay? So that projection at the end, the tip right there gives you an idea that if at all, only if at all the bullishness picks up and the trend on the bullish side of it really persists, then you could see prices coming up to this area right there. And that area is the 1.2563 area. Okay, now you are right here at 2392, let's say. So if at all you want to look into a buying opportunity, only if the three time frames are actually all you know matching with each other and everything looks great, then you want to convert this simple ABCD or bullish ABCD pattern into a bullish geometric pattern by drawing a line from A point right up to the D point. Now you've got a geometric pattern. Earlier on, it was only an ABCD pattern, okay? Now, once you've got a geometric pattern, the reason for converting from an ABCD pattern to a geometric pattern is to get the cross point right here. That cross point is called a centroid. That actually means the intersection between your AD line and your BC line. When you've got a cross and like an X in the middle here, gives you an indication of where your entry point could probably be. But of course, we need to do a little bit of tweaking with that line according to psychological numbers as well. So let's say I put that right there in the middle and that points up to 2360, okay? 1.236060, 60, the last two digit, 60 is above 50, which is okay. You can actually buy at that point because it's 10 pips above the 50 psychological number. But as prices go up and up and up, let's say now you've already missed that earlier buying price, but then now you, let's say you've just opened up your chart, you've just came back from work, and then you see that now it's trading at 1.2392, okay? So 1.2392, as prices go up and up and up, it's just too close to 1.24 zero zero psychological number okay so that actually means i'll just wait until price goes up further and it needs to go above the psychological number at least by 10 pips to consider an ideal buying price so what would the ideal buying price be the ideal buying price would be 1.2400 plus 10 which actually means 1.2410. So 1.2410 would actually be a, an ideal price, okay? So 1.24, 1.2410 would actually be an ideal or better price for you to consider a buy uh, sort of position or 1.2430, which is above the 1.2420 okay so you've got two choices of an ideal price right there okay for those of uh, for those traders who would like to be a little bit more conservative want to measure out their risk they would then look at that b point right there and start drawing a zone okay a resistant type zone so here you could go onto the highest body right here and then the highest wick right there so that actually means that you would then prefer not to take the price at 24, um, 2410 or 2.430, you want to go higher. That actually means you've got a zone right here that you would wish for prices to go through or pass this zone first. That actually means above 2445. But as prices go at 2445 and a little bit above, it would then meet the 2450 psychological number. So you would only uh, end up buying at 2460. So your 2460, let's just put the 2460 right there. Okay, so 2460 would be around here. Okay, and that would be a conservative trader like myself. I, I would then would like to really measure my risk properly and would prefer to actually 
take smaller amount, but then measure out all the risk. And now, if prices were to end, if you were to enter a buy at two four sixty, let's say you can do a pending order on this one, uh, two four sixty, very easy. You go into your new order section right there, okay, and you change your market execution order here to a pending order. You insert the price one point two four sixty as your potential buying price. As prices go up and up and up, if you look left, you may be challenged by these people right here, previous uh, selling zone. So you want to draw from the uh, lowest body right there. And then the highest wick at that moment is right there in the middle. So you've got a range of three lines right there and that becomes your reversal zone. So if you buy at 2460, you want to get out of the market or take your profit before it reaches inside this zone or before it touches the last line. That last line is at exactly at 2550. Okay, so 2550 is really not an ideal take profit because it's right on the dot of the psychological number. So what you do is you take your profit right under the 2550 by 10 pips. So 2540, let me just do this, 2540. Okay, 2540 right here would actually be your ideal take profit. Okay, so you could use the very simple rule for stop loss, which is one to one ratio. That actually means you measure the profit right here. You measure the potential profit right here. Okay, you measure the potential profit right here, right up, right there. So that gives you about 79 or let's say 80 pips right there. So you've got an 80 pips potential for a buy on the euro usd but not until it uh, reaches this black area right here we call it the black c zone and that is where you would trade so you would then buy at 2460 uh, then you would actually take profit at 1.2540 okay so that's your trade idea right there for euro usd if only the buy uh, position really persist okay so there you go you've got right there now if you've got 80 pips right there then you take your 80 pips from entry point so 2460 minus 80 and that would be your stop loss area so you've got the same or exact number of pips for your profit potential you want to equalize that to your uh, potential stop loss in terms of number of pips i hope that actually makes sense to you guys i hope i'm not going too fast yeah, forgive me if it's really fast like a choo-choo train. <laughs> you can stop me at any time. You guys are okay? So far, you're following this? Yeah, it's okay? You guys are all right, yeah? Hope it's okay. You like it like this, Jess? Okay, good. Thank you for that. Okay, good. So you've got your Euro USD there, four-hour chart. That's basically it. Now, the thing is, it's just that it's not giving you very a clear strength of trend just from the way the three EMAs are actually moving at this moment of time, okay? But you've got a trade idea right there. You could easily do it uh, with a pending order as well, okay? All right, let's look at the next the next one right here. Let's see what we, what we could actually gather. Um, let's go on to uh, something with the GBP, okay? Let's see what's going on with the GBP. We had some appreciation of price today. I uh, just want to look at Let's see what's going on because we've got more Brexit type news related things that are coming soon. Uh, more things are going to be announced and things like that. So let's look at what's going on now. Here, if we look at the GBP, uh, thank you for that, Leandro. So if we look into GBP USD on the one hour chart, let's say, for example, we could see that at a glance, we want to do things fast but proper. We want to look at the position of candles. We want to look at the three lines that they're actually pointing up and then split, uh, having split ends and pointing upwards. We've only got the candles pointing up at the moment. Uh, no, we've got the candles, sorry, as well as the three lines sort of pointing up. But let me just clear up this. Uh, I mean, as in change the color so it's more obvious on the 200 moving exponential moving average. So we've got it a little entanglement there, but then you've got a, a bit of a pickup. That means they start to split open and point up a little bit like like a mushroom growing yeah and um, but you've got candles uh, the candles you know they've got very strong dominant to the upside so we we see that it's biased to the upside on the gbp usd on a one hour chart but this is just one hour chart so let's compare your one hour chart with the four hour chart we actually make up a bit of a story um <clears throat> the story here is not really clear in terms of the strength of the trend mainly because of 
three lines is still pointing sideways. They may be still waiting for something, not really sure what it is, yeah? But we've got candles above, but again, it's not really that strong. It's not giving you the idea that the GBPUSD's strength of trend will actually persist longer. It's not giving you that idea, mainly because of the three lines moving sideways as well, okay? Now, let's go on to the daily chart. With the daily chart, you've got a bit of an appreciation of price, a little bit of a bias to the upside, but again, three lines pointing, not bad, split, and they've got split ends. They don't touch each other, which is a, a good sign. Uh, maybe they're picking up to the long term. We don't know. Maybe something's actually going to make the GBP rise up a little bit more. We don't know that, but it may be a sign right there because you've got, um, <coughs> excuse me, you have got the appreciation of price going upwards and you have got the majority of candles above all three lines but it's just that we need more angle we need the three lines to actually point up a little bit better a little bit uh the, the angle should actually be more steep and then we get more strength of the trend okay so not just yet um, but what happens if we go on to the 15 minute shot and uh, let's look at what's going on in the 15 minutes now 15 minutes it looks very clear on the upside okay it looks like you've got candles about a um, up above the three lines, you've got three lines pointing upwards, split, um, you know, from each other. They don't touch, which is a very good sign. Then you've got depreciation of price coming down, but still far away from the three lines. But as you go on to the 30-minute chart, you see that appreciation still there, okay? And if you go on to one hour, you can still see that there. So if you look into 15, 30, and one hour, you may actually find some opportunities right there with patterns as well. Now, the thing with patterns as well is that it may actually have actually gone past in terms of, uh, you know, the ABCD pattern. The reason I say that is because if I find A right here, I may have a B right here, C, and it may have already touched. So if I first I pull my if I pull my Fibonacci from A to B, I just want to look at whether or not my C point is a minimum of 38.2. We need to be a minimum of 38.2 for the C point. Okay, so I'll take that because it's uh, C point could be considered right here. Okay, that's a lower zone right there. So if I've got my A B at the time, okay, and then I see that my B C is right here. Okay. What happens is I'll double click that and I bring that right up. Yeah. Okay. Bring that right up. So once I do that, I need to redraw my A to B right here. Okay. Just to equalize A B equals C D, correct? So then I would then at the time would actually look into potential take profit area right there under that area. Of course, it went up further and all that, but this was uh, a potential ABCD for practice purposes for you guys, me drawing the ABCD pattern to show you, yeah? So you've got that ABCD as a trade idea right there. You could have entered above that enter point, center point or centroid area. So 1.3865 still be a good price right there, mainly because it's above the 50 psychological number, okay? Or if you want to be more conservative, you want to wait until it reaches the uh, 90, 38.90 uh, area because it's above the 80 psychological number. But that's a little bit too far away, but mainly because I may find that you've got a lot of risk right here. Even you are buying around here, let's say, look at this area here just went downwards. Mainly if you look left, that's because it's got a lot of concentration point right here. Okay, so we've got all this family of candles right here. Uh, you can actually do right that there, you see, based on this one here and based on lowest body highs right there hence the reason it actually just you know uh, decided to to make a correction right there as it went up really powerful with a single candle right there but then it you know reversed right down here and found support and then went up so that that's why looking left is really crucial so you look left you can see all this concentration of candles as well so if i look at the highest body right here and i take that one out you and I take that one out, you can see the whole concentration of resistance, loads of touch point. Look left again, you've got more resistance right here. Hence the reason it became like that, came back down. Then you've got the buyers going upwards. But as it actually moved upwards now, look left again, you could see, you could see that that movement down. So hence the reason when you're a buyer, you need to look up for sellers in the past. 
So if you draw a zone right here, highest uh, lowest uh, body, sorry, highest body right there and highest wick. Okay, so you've got two lines. You need a minimum of two lines at least to draw your support resistance. So hence the reason it depreciated right there, you see. So you need to always look at different um, sort of um, approaches, different elements to add into uh, your trade plan in order for you to actually make it more accurate. So there you go. That's the reason why it depreciated because of that really big move to the downside. So um, in theory, of course, you know, you hear books saying previous uh, resistance becomes a support, uh, previous uh, support becomes a resistance. But look at this one here. It's not always that you've got previous resistance becomes a support. It became another resistance right there and it actually drove prices down, uh, mainly because in the practical world of trading, you want to actually look at money flow, you want to look at transactions. So these are all human beings that you see on all these uh, candles. So you've got behavior right there and that behavior is actually based on a community of traders and big boys and all that and they have uh, pushed um, you know, drop prices down from that angle right there down to about 286 plus pips. So that was a significant drop. So they had reasons reasons at that time to actually uh, have driven prices all the way down. So there's just no guarantee that it won't drive down price again because you are in their territory. So you need to do, you need to understand if you are a buyer in whose territory are you at, in which territory are you in? Okay, if you are in the territory of previous selling, very strong selling territory, you need to be careful because you are a buyer. You're not part of them. Okay, so they may take you out. So that's basically how you need to look at. Okay, so there you go. That's the reason why you've got that. Now, if I go further, if I take that out, you'd see that on the left, you've just got just too many touch points of resistance and then you've got that a big nice fall right there as well and then you've got more resistance as you go on and on and on you've also got previous support yes but then it's dominated by more resistance okay so as you go into four hour time frame let's say you could see all these lines that we've drawn as your zones are well respected very very nicely it's okay so that's price action on its own so with price action itself laying out all these very important zones like this one here resistance zone and then you um mix and match your patterns in there psychological numbers various other confirmation you follow the price trade plan that we will actually then go into price trade plan um for the course which is on thursday okay guys all right so um, Jason, you've got a uh, you've got a uh, a uh, question here about your struggle on plotting the B two C on the live graph. Okay, let's let's do that together. Um, do you actually wait for higher higher highs closer? Okay, let's get to that and uh, before completing the B two C. So you've got a bit of a struggle in plotting the B two C. You need the C. Okay, let's do that here. All right, so let's just simplify everything and. Okay, let's do that here. Okay, let's say you're looking into A here, B here. Yeah, the C needs to be the lowest point. Okay, if that were to be lowest, you take that as your C, as simple as that. Now, your A does actually depend on your C point. What that actually means is you need A to actually be touching either one of the Fibonacci ratio, okay? Now, you can have that low here, you can have many lows, correct? But let's take one of the lows and go all the way up to B. You pull your first Fibonacci A to B. What you want to do is, like this one here may not actually be a very high probability type uh, pattern, maybe because you've got your C point. You see your C point is actually hanging in the middle of 38.2, between 38.2 as well as 50% Fibonacci. If it touches either one, it's even better. We like touches, touch points, okay? So if I move this A, you can actually move your A to any other lows. If I move this just slightly above to this low instead of that lowest point, I see that it touches even closer, okay? Maybe not touch exactly, but you've got very minuscule uh, what do you call that distance between it touching it? So I'll take that instead. So what I will do then is I I'll consider this as my A point. Okay, so I'll take that and I need to now adjust 
my whole pattern just like that okay get that all the way up here okay and get that one down here all the way here so now that's my ABCD because my C point, the lowest point right there. Now, when visually, you just need the, the, the C point to be your lowest point. So A, you pull your A, just make sure that your C point touches one of the Fibonacci ratios. When you pull A to B, your B is your high point. Your C is your low point, okay? Your D is your projected point of how far prices can go. So you've got it right up there, okay? Now, it says that it could go right up there, which it did, actually. So you could have actually taken profit. But for me, as a conservative trader, I like to look to the left and I've just got so much risk right here for me to actually come back down again. Okay, so I may take a little bit of pips, but then I'll continue further later on. But again, I don't actually even know that this might actually happen or not. So I would like to really measure the type of pattern and look left and see what your challenges are. Okay. Um, fundamentals. Uh, yes, is that clear for you, Jason? I, I hope it is. I, I've uh, mentioned to you on that. Is that okay? Can you make your C A? Um, mm, not sure what that means, Kumbulani. What does that mean? Can you make your C A C A? Um, you mean your uh, from A to D? You mean or C A? Your C is here, and your A is here. Okay, Jason, that's clear. Good. Okay, so um, Jess has got a question about fundamentals to trade. Do I use fundamental? The answer to that is yes, but then what about fundamental do I actually use? Now, the thing is that it's very important for you to understand when you use fundamental, it does not mean that you go into FX3 or you go into Tick Mill's economic calendar and everything else and just based on the economic calendar, look at the results and that's fundamental. That's not fundamental analysis, okay? Uh, you need to be... I'm sure that you need a few other things because even even if you look into a bit of uh, geopolitical reasons behind why uh, certain things happen, that's also on the fundamental side of it. Uh, also, when you look into um, economic calendar, there are reasons to believe that you need to match up a few um, data that connect to each other. So CPI may connect to something else, may connect to inflation figures and everything else, uh, two, three things. So what I'm going to be showing you on Thursday is how do you correlate fundamental, okay? So on Thursday during the course, we'll be going through the whole price trade plan. So I'll be showing you how to correlate as well. How do you actually look into fundamentals? I've got some uh, diagrams as well for you to see and for you to look at. So do join me on Thursday, 7 p.m. so we can actually go through the entire trade plan again, but then this time a little bit more practical and a little bit more onto the fundamental side of it as well. So you, you have a step-by-step, step, step one, step two, P-R-I-C-E in doing things practically. Okay, so don't worry, we'll cover that on Thursday, okay? Um, so there you go. Uh, yes, CPI, inflation, interest rates. Um, actually, there's just no need to actually look into all the numbers because all the numbers, CPI can actually be CP line instead. Okay? What that means is that, you know, there's just no 100% uh, uh, figures that are actually really accurate nowadays. So there's a lot of manipulation going on as well, uh, you know, with the price of gold, with the price of the dollar, with uh, a lot of other things as well. So uh, together with the um, economic data releases as well. So there are ways to actually filter out all the inaccuracy of, uh, you know, these figures and numbers. And that's why we want to combine, yes, some fundamentals, but it's more important for you to look at, you know, top movers, look at who's moving the market, and then you go on the economic calendar to look at high impact, medium impact type news, and uh, it middle, sorry, um, medium to high impact type economic data releases, and just look at what sort of pair, uh, what sort of currencies would it actually then impact? then we confirmed it with various other things on the technical side of it and the patterns and price patterns or price action as well. So you want to mix up all the very important ingredients so that you get a better, clearer vision of the trend as well as understand which pair is best for you to trade and how do you trade them? How do you cut out all the uh, cut out most of the risk and increase your probability in reaching the take profit? Okay. All right. Thank you, Jess.
Fantastic. Yes, please do join us on Thursday. So it will be quite a uh, interesting one on Thursday. We'll go through the trade plan uh, on the live market. So you'll be shown on how I would actually be trading uh, and, uh, you know, what are the processes. You know, I want to keep it short and sweet, but then we want to go onto the chart, onto the live chart, and we want to practice the, the, the price trade plan practically onto the chart. Okay, does that sound good to you guys? Brilliant. So, uh, yeah, join me onto the Telegram group as well. You know, it's, uh, you know, um, a lot of people from all parts of the world will be, um, you know, just sharing ideas as well. But then you can actually ask me on Telegram group. So do go on to fxgeometry.com, click onto the Telegram uh, group right there, and uh, we can then discuss uh, whatever we discuss um, here onto Tick Mills. Um, courses uh, are all you know mentored by myself via my telegram group as well so i can actually then uh, would love to see your screenshots as well so if you've got like a pattern drawn uh, it'll be best for you to share it with the rest of the group so i can then keep monitoring and mentoring you guys okay does that sound good brilliant okay guys i think that's all i have for you guys uh, tonight uh, i would like to uh, thank you guys a lot i know it's not too much of the trade ideas uh, tonight, but uh, feel free to go onto the Telegram group where the trade ideas will be actually shared quite a lot, and you guys can ask, um, you know, on the pairs and uh, things that you are, you know, pairs that you are looking at, and I'll be sharing that. The reason for it is mainly because tonight I want a, a bit of a breather uh, onto the, uh, the the trade plan a little bit, you know, the, a bit on the basics on the support resistance and all that, mainly to 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 really make sure that you understand the base, the foundation side of it before we go on to the patterns and you know more on the trade plan. So hence the reason I've done it this way so that we can actually really focus on a practical trade plan on Thursday. Okay, guys, good. Um, the first two sessions, yes, Sibonello. What you can actually do is contact your account manager um, and email Chris C H R I S at tickmill.com and request uh, and basically get guidance on how do you actually uh, get materials as well as your uh, video videos uh, recordings of the webinars okay feel free to do that thank you very much guys okay guys Leandro Tom everybody thank you so much uh, thank you all for attending my webinar tonight I uh, really appreciate it and uh, feel free you can also email me as well as Chris me at Kenny at fxjohntree.com as well as Chris uh, for anything um, related to tick mail as well as um, you know questions that you have on your uh, recordings or certificate or anything else uh, do email Chris at F uh, Chris at tickmail.com okay guys all right, once more, thank you very much. Have a lovely night and see you on Thursday's course. Bye-bye, guys. Take care.